I've been playing a lot of top tier recently, and there have been a lot of situations where I feel like I'm notching correctly, pulling 90 degrees and spamming chaff, but even still, the enemy missile connects. Now, most of the videos I've seen about evading Fox 3 missiles just talk about notching and turning perpendicular. There is some talk about strategy of launching missiles, like doing F-pole maneuvers, cranking, no escape zones, and stuff like that. But I haven't seen any detailed looks into actually defending against radar missiles and how their radars actually work beyond just notch and chaff. So I decided to run some tests to figure out how exactly the radar on board Fox 3s operate and how to optimally guide them in and defeat them. This was also partly motivated by a video I saw on how to use Datalink to guide Fox 3s towards enemies, even if they're notching, made by Migan Fox 3. Definitely go check out his videos, he's very articulate at explaining both the mechanics and gameplay at top tier, and I've learned a lot from watching them. So, the main questions I aim to answer in this video are primarily, 1. How do Fox 3 radars operate, and what causes them to lose or regain lock? What modes do they have, and what exactly <coughs> makes them switch between those modes? 2. How does data link work? 3. What exactly is the role of chaff and how does it affect radars? And 4. How do you effectively notch at close ranges? Let's start with an overview of the radar terminology. Skip this section if you already know what things like notching, inertial guidance, and pitbull mean. Non-pulse Doppler radars identify targets by sending a radar signal and measuring how long it takes for the signal to reflect back, sort of like echolocation. These radars are affected by ground clutter since when you send out radar signals downwards, a lot of the reflected signal comes from the ground, making it hard to identify targets. It'll also get fooled by chaff, since chaff is designed to create large radar reflections. Pulse Doppler radars operate by measuring convergence rate between the radar and its target, so it can filter out ground clutter by removing signals that have the same convergence speed as the ground, giving them the ability to detect targets that are below them even if there is a ground background behind them. It can also filter out chaff since chaff loses all speed after being deployed and ends up being filtered out with the ground clutter. Notching is when you make it hard for a pulse Doppler radar to find you by flying in the same convergence speed as the ground, effectively filtering your plane out along with the ground clutter. You can achieve this by either hovering or flying perpendicular to the radar, whether it's vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. This also means that if you're off bore sight, you want to fly at a skew angle to properly notch. Inertial guidance is a system equipped on some missiles that allows it to visualize its position and its destination in 3D space. Most early missiles don't have inertial guidance, and instead are just told to follow a specific signal. For example, most IR missiles do not have inertial guidance and instead just track heat signals without any information on how far away the target is. Inertial guidance is basically a gyro which measures position, orientation, velocity, and acceleration, allowing it to consider how far away it is from a destination even without its radar or data link. Data link is another system equipped on some missiles that allows the plane that fired the missile to send update signals to the missile about where the target is, which is useful in situations where the missile itself cannot see the target. FOX-3s are another name for active radar missiles. They are equipped with inertial guidance and data link so that the plane can guide the missile towards the target until it gets close enough that the missile can turn on its PD radar and actively seek the target without input from the plane, or going pitbull. So that's all the relevant terminology, so let's get into the findings. I'm going to describe each phase that the missile goes through as it flies throughout its trajectory, and describe what modes it goes through and how it reacts to different situations. FOX-3s can be launched using either TWS or track mode. The marks on the right show minimum and maximum range of the missile, as well as the ideal launch range depending on the attitude of your plane and the target. When fired outside of pitbull range, the missile will use inertial guidance and data link, using data from the plane's radar to guide itself towards a target, effectively working like a semi-active missile. If you turn off your radar or lose lock, the missile loses the data link updates from your plane and goes into pure inertial guidance mode. This means that the missile remembers the position and velocity of the target from when it was last updated and tries to maneuver towards the target. It doesn't know exactly where the target is, but if the target were to fly perfectly straight with the same velocity, then the missile would be able to navigate somewhat towards the target, though not precisely since there's a bit of drift. If the target were to maneuver, because the plane and the missile have its radars off, the missile would have no way of knowing that the target has maneuvered and so would most likely miss. Basically, if it's only using inertial guidance, the missile is flying blind and guessing where the target is going to be based off its last known position and velocity, 
by assuming that the target would just continue along the same straight path. If you lose your TWS lock or turn your radar off, this resets your data link. So you will be unable to send your data link updates to the missile even if you reacquire the target on your radar. This seems a bit odd considering that you can lose lock and regain it to make use of data link on semi-actives like the R27ER, but this is just what the testing shows. When you launch the missile outside of pitbull range, the missile will continue towards where it thinks the target is. This target location is pretty accurate if it's being guided in with data link, but potentially inaccurate if it's been only using inertial guidance. This end circle is where it thinks the target is, whether via data link or inertial guidance. This dashed line shows how much farther the missile has to go until it is in range of the target's presumed location, and as the missile continues towards this location, the dashed line will shrink until it only becomes a solid line. The solid line is the pitbull range, the distance the missile has to be from the target to go active. Once it reaches within that range, the missile will turn on its own onboard radar and try to lock the target by looking at where it's been guiding towards. If the missile was guided in with data link, the enemy will most likely be found immediately by the missile search radar, since the data link should be showing exactly where to search for the target. The end circle disappears, and the missile will begin seeking the target on its own. If it was guided in only by inertial guidance and the enemy maneuvered, there's a good chance that the missile will not find the target it was originally intended for, and so will remain in inertial guidance while continuously searching in the direction that it was heading. It may be able to pick up something eventually, but there's a good chance the missile never finds its target, drifting off until it runs out of energy. Assuming the missile found its target, the missile will now guide itself in with its own radar in pulse Doppler mode. If the target takes no evasive action, then it is very likely that the missile will find its mark, as long as it has the energy to do so. However, once the missile goes active, it will start pinging the enemy's RWR, likely causing them to take evasive action. The most common response for the target to do is to go into a notch, flying perpendicular to where they are receiving the radar signals from. What's interesting is how the missile radar reacts to this. If the target is above the missile, the missile will switch into non-pulse Doppler track mode so that it can continue to track the target. This also makes it susceptible to chaff, which if used will cause the target lock to switch to the chaff and defeat the missile. If the target is below the missile as it notches, the missile realizes that it cannot go into track mode without being overwhelmed by ground clutter, and so instead goes back into inertial guidance search mode. It will continue to head towards and search in the direction of where it thinks the target is based off its last known position and velocity. However, the missile can't actually see the target, so if the target is able to leave the notch without the missile finding them, it is actually means that chaff is optional when defending against missiles coming from high up. This even works at relatively shallow angles and from close range. As long as the missile is pointing below the horizon, it cannot track a notching enemy, even without the target using chaff. To fully defend against this, the defender would have to exit the notch in a location where the missile is not looking, meaning that while in the notch they would have to turn, accelerate, or decelerate enough that they leave the search cone of the missile. There is still a way to guide in the missile even against a notching enemy below you though. If the attacker maintained the original data link lock using TWS or track mode from their plane radar, the missile goes into data link mode again, meaning that if the missile radar is notched but the plane radar is not, the missile will still have a good idea of where the target is and continue towards it. Data link usually isn't accurate enough to guide the missile close enough to the target that it'll proxy and kill them, meaning that the missile will still miss if the missile continues to be notched. But if the target leaves the notch, then the missile will be looking exactly where the target is, meaning it will regain target lock immediately and begin actively homing again. The fact that you don't need chaff to notch when below enemies actually quite surprised me, so as a sanity check, I played a few games in a stock plane with no chaff to see if this actually works in game, and sure enough, it actually does, even at relatively close ranges. With all this in mind, is chaff actually useful when defending at low altitude? We do know that chaff is useful when notching missiles coming from below, since the missile goes into a non-PD track mode to track targets flying perpendicular above them. Chaff is also useful when notching plane radars, regardless of looking up or looking down, since when a target tries to notch a plane radar, it is usually strong enough to hold the lock even in lookdown mode, requiring chaff to escape the plane lock. But for missiles coming from above, it would follow that since the missile never uses non-PD track mode, would it ever be susceptible to chaff at all? Upon testing, it seems that chaff does have an effect, though it can be wasteful or even harmful if used wrong. At long range, chaff seems to have basically no effect. 
and it's only under 5 kilometers that chaff seems to have an effect on the missile seeker at all. Its effect is rather inconsistent. It seems to distract the missile's radar temporarily, putting it in some kind of track mode, though I'm not sure if it's PD or non-PD, and being most effective within a second after it's been deployed. Chaff is more effective when dropped in large clusters as opposed to sporadically and intermittently, as it is more likely to distract the seeker. So if you drop a burst of chaff in just one place and leave it behind, the missile will typically go for the chaff. But if you continuously and periodically chaff, then the missile seeker can jump from one chaff to the next as the chaff in the rear loses efficacy, sometimes even following the chaff breadcrumbs back into reacquiring your plane. And as for how chaff affects datalink, in lookup mode chaff will still distract the missile even with datalink, but in lookdown mode chaff barely affects it at all. As of December 19th, they introduced angle gating to all Fox 3s except the Phoenix variants. This makes missiles less likely to go for targets that have a significantly different speed traveling across the missile's field of view, meaning that while notching, chaff, which is mostly static, will be much less effective. Upon testing, it seems that the effect of this is that the breadcrumbing effect of missiles falling chaff back to your plane now also applies to when defending against a missile looking up at you and coming from below, though there doesn't seem to be a range limit to when chaff becomes effective. When defending against missiles looking down at you and coming from above, however, it seems that chaff is also less effective and only distracts the missile consistently when within 3 kilometers. Overall, because chaff is not as effective anymore, there will be a greater emphasis on exiting the notch where the initial guidance seeker isn't looking by turning up, turning down, speeding up, and slowing down. If you're going to chaff, try to drop bursts of 3 and extend. If you're unsure if you've defeated the missile with chaff yet, then wait a few seconds before dropping another set to make sure that you've left the previous set of chaff behind. So as a summary, to maintain data link, you must maintain a hard lock or TWS and not lose the lock or turn your radar off. It's best to maintain data link until the missile at least goes pitbull such that the missile can immediately find the target and go active. And even better if you can maintain the lock throughout the entire launch so that you can track enemies even if they go into a notch. If you notch by going perpendicular, the missile will go into a non-track PD mode if looking up, and inertial guidance search mode if looking down. Inertial guidance by itself can be defeated by exiting the notch where the missile's search isn't expecting you to be, which can be achieved by speeding up and slowing down and turning up or down. This means that if you are defending and below the attacker, and the attacker is not using data link, you can quite consistently notch without needing to use chaff at all. Chaff can be effective against a missile in non-pulse Doppler track mode, and is best used in burst followed by pauses to prevent breadcrumbing. Chaff is less effective against missiles in inertial guidance search mode, really only distracting it consistently under 3 kilometers. And chaff is almost completely ineffective against missiles if the missile also has data link from the attacking plane. Now there's no way of knowing for sure if the enemy is using data link beyond checking for a hard lock from the plane, but if they are, the missile will immediately acquire you as soon as you leave the notch, so I'm not quite sure what you can do here. You could try to stay in the notch since the data link alone isn't accurate enough to guide the missile in, or notch the aircraft's radar alongside the missile, or out-energy the missile, or multipath, but all these strategies are very inconsistent, so I'm not entirely sure what the best strategy would be. It would have to depend on the situation. Now on to notching at very close ranges. The principles I talked about earlier still hold, but I've always had a hunch that in very close range head-on scenarios, you actually need to turn more than 90 degrees in order to notch, even though being perpendicular is mechanically the best angle to notch at. And after some testing, there are two reasons why I think that this is actually the case. One, at close ranges, the missile will also move and track with your plane, meaning that you need to turn even more than 90 degrees from where it was originally launched. You need to keep an eye out for the missile's current position and try to notch based off of that, not the missile's launch or previous positions. And two, your plane pulls angle of attack as it turns, meaning the nose of your plane and its velocity vector are misaligned, sometimes up to 20 degrees or more, meaning that while it may look like your plane is notching, it's actually drifting and not actually fully in a notch. So to make sure that your plane is fully notching, you need to pull your nose farther ahead such that your plane's velocity vector is perpendicular. And just to close things off, here are some other ways to defeat Fox 3s. Multipathing can work with the right setup, but you need to be below 50 meters radar altitude for at least a second for the missile to significantly shift trajectory away from you, and even still it's only a 20 meter tolerance that you have. 
and if the missile is launched from a very steep angle above you, there's a good chance that the missile's proxy fuse detonates on you anyways. On top of that, since there are a lot of trees that are 50 meters or taller, this strategy is very inconsistent, so I'd recommend not relying on it, unless there are a lot of consistently flat terrain areas. If fired from a long enough distance, you can kinetically defeat the missile by cranking, basically flying off to the side and trying to make the missile turn as much as possible so that it loses energy before it can get to you. Or you could completely turn away and run away, going cold to outrun the missile. Neither of these strategies are that good in my opinion, since you don't really know that much about the missile's energy state or how much effort you need in order to defeat it. Plus, it often puts you in an extremely defensive and disadvantageous position, so I wouldn't rely on either of these. One really stupid way I found that you could defeat Fox 3s is using teleportation. If you end up near the map border, you can use the return to battlefield mechanic to teleport yourself, away from the missile search cone. This only really works on the city map, since it's small, but even still it's usually not worth doing since all the other strategies are much more effective. And so that's everything. Um, I'm still not entirely sure how chaff works on missile radars, since it's rather inconsistent, especially when the missile is in look down mode looking at chaff. It took me about a week of running tests and custom battles, and another day to see what changed after they added angle gating, and I'm still kind of confused. But hopefully you found this helpful. At the very least, the stock grind should be a bit easier since chaff is not a necessity to notch. That's all for now. Bye bye.